What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're new to our channel, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on post notifications, say something to us in the comment section. Whether you agree or disagree with us, it don't matter. We'll be engaged with you guys on there. But um, if you're also listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you give us a nice little review on there as well. We also respond back to all your guys' comments and feedback. But as for our video, we're going to talk about, you know, James Harden's issues, what team should consider trading for him, not necessarily trade for him, but consider trading for him. And what Houston should do in order to, you know what I'm saying, move forward from James Harden. Now, I'm going to start it off with, actually, I'm going to have Greg start it off. Greg, what are your thoughts on the issues and things that have been going on with Harden lately? The issues with Harden that's going on is really, it's really not, it's really not surprising. He wants to get out of there. And I think, I think he will get traded, maybe not right away, but in the future, they just, Houston just really needs to, to figure out what assets can you get back that equal either the same as Harden or at least a step below Harden like so they they're gonna take their time in this process but with everything that's going on to Harden I just I, I'm kind of confused it's like Harden's never been a guy I mean he does a lot of stuff off court he knows a lot of people but I've never seen him really just just like act out and be have being all this drama and do not showing up to practice and stuff like that so I'm, and picking fights in practice so I think that part of it is surprising but everything else is I think everything will play out the Rockets just really need to figure out what they want to do especially it seems like they want to be in a win now mode so with the acquisitions that they acquired over this offseason so they just really need to sit down and figure out what they want to do with this Harden situation Right, I agree with you 100%. You know, obviously, Harden isn't happy with his situation in Houston and obviously did stated that whenever he requested a trade. Now, Houston's postseason woes and lack of progression throughout the years has played a pivotal part in Harden wanting out of Houston in the first place. And now, as you all know, Harden has been receiving a ton of, you know, negative press due to his lack of leadership and negative behavior. And to start off with, he missed the first practice of the season because he was too busy partying with big time rap artist Lil Baby. You know, he was in Atlanta celebrating the rap artist's birthday with a few other mainstream artists there and, you know, other celebrities and things of that nature. And he actually even went as far as purchasing Lil Baby an expensive Richard Milley watch, a designer Prada bag full of honey buns. I don't know why he gave him a whole bunch That's of money. That's weird. Buns, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, an exceptional wad of cash, you know, worth $100,000, I believe. But this wasn't the first time Harden was caught out and about. You know, just recently, an Instagram story surfaced on the internet of Harden partying at an unknown location. Uh, you know, the reason why this is news to begin with, though, is because due to COVID-19 restrictions, NBA players are not allowed to enter clubs, bars, or be in areas with 15 or more people without wearing a mask, you know? And in the video, Harden clearly has violated all of these guidelines, which yeah. resulted in him receiving $50,000 fine. But the shenanigans didn't even necessarily stop there, you know? Like you stated, Harden got into an altercation with his rookie teammate, Jay Sean Tate, and reports claim that Harden threw a basketball at him in frustration during the practice before the NBA restart. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's funny to me, bro. I, I'm, a I'm, basketball? Yeah, man. Didn't even throw hands? <laughs> right. I mean, now clearly Harden's making a statement that he's going to be a headache in the locker room unless he's traded immediately. And if I'm the general manager of the Houston Rockets, I honestly wouldn't be in a rush to trade Harden. You know, um, I'd wait as long as possible for a trade offer that I'd feel is equivalent to the value that James Harden obtains, you know, like he stated. And then I'd pull the plug, you know, but yeah. because you didn't want to trade, you don't want to trade him too early, like I said, and miss out on a better trade package. But honestly, the only problem with playing the waiting game is that the ball isn't really in Houston's court as of right now. You know, the fact that other teams know that you guys are trying to ship him out of town allows them to start the bidding at a low price. You know, those opposing franchises aren't going to offer Houston the best possible package because they want to see if Houston is desperate enough to take what they're already offering, you know? Yeah. And Harden only wants to go to certain locations, too. So, right. I mean, and, and for example, everyone knows that Daryl Morey of the Philadelphia 76ers wants to acquire James Harden. And he's offered to exchange Ben Simmons and a first round draft pick in order to acquire James Harden. But Houston feels as if they can receive more for Harden, therefore they're not going to go through with this trade. And now there's numerous teams since then that have discussed potential trades for Harden, but unfortunately Houston isn't interested in exchanging their all-star combo guard for lower level stars or role players, you know, like you stated earlier. And another issue has been that opposing teams aren't willing to give up their franchise player for Harden. Nobody's really, you know what I'm saying, trying to give up their best player for a guy like James Harden. They, there's just too many things that comes with Harden, you know. I, I can't blame them for that, you know, because like I said, there's just 
there's too much stuff that comes with Harden, man. I mean, for one, there's no guarantee that Harden will come right in and be able to adjust to whatever organization that trades for him style of play. You know, second, reports have claimed that he flies out to different cities to attend clubs whenever there's a multiple days off with no games. You know, that can be a bit of a concern, especially if he's going to be your leader of the team. Uh, now, this is a huge concern because this kind of shows you that, you know, his head isn't always in the right place and yeah. can be easily distracted, you know? Now, if I'm his coach, I wouldn't want these particular behaviors influencing the rest of my team, but yeah. it kind of all depends on how much Harden is willing to buy in. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, that's why that's why I was saying that he's kind of like being, being a headache is like really, it, it, it could affect the culture, especially with the new people they're bringing in and stuff like that. And, and with the Rockets trying to be in win now mode, him, him being like this is just not, not right. Right. And obviously, if he's coming in every day and producing for us and it translates to wins, then there won't be much of a problem, you know. But yeah. if things aren't going too well, then obviously his behaviors will need to be addressed. But yeah. with all that being said, I think there's three teams that should possibly consider trading for Houston for Harden. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, number one is obviously the Philadelphia 76ers, you know. Yeah, I agree. I think with the additions of Danny Green and Steph Curry, this kind of complements Harden well because having players he can rely on to knock down shots from beyond the arc maximizes his ability to cre uh, create shots for his teammates, you know? Also, he won't have to carry the scoring load. You know, guys like Tobias Harris give him an offensive presence and have showcased that they can win games for you down the stretch. Also, Joel Embiid is a future Hall of Famer. Everybody already knows that, you know, and has shown that he has the drive to win the championship. Plus, a pick and roll involving Embiid and Harden. I mean, that would be deadly, yo. That's, that's <laughs> that a would be disaster, you know, as yeah. long as Embiid's able to stay healthy. Um, and how, and, and I have a question. How do you think Doc Rivers will be able to coach Harden? How I do think, you think that I chemistry think Harden, would be good. I think the thing, the problem with Houston was that Harden didn't really have too much to respect in that organization. You know, I feel like yeah. Philadelphia is more of a respectable franchise, in my opinion, you know, because I mean, even for one, before James Harden even got to Houston, you know, they were on the verge of becoming a, a lottery team. You know, they were damn near becoming a laughing stock. I mean, th their best player was Kevin Martin. He's not even in the NBA anymore. So, you know, I think with him coming into Philadelphia, if, you know, if they decide to acquire him, he's going to have, he's going to be in a position where he can take everything seriously. You know, like I stated, Danny Green's a proven player. Joel Embiid's hungry. Um, they got great role players around them. Shake Milton has elevated his game. You got yeah. a decent head coach and you have the GM that you know is going to bring in the players that you want because, you know, yeah. somebody that you came up with. Yeah, he's an aggressive GM. I like that. Right. But I mean, for the second team that I personally feel should consider trading for Harden is the Miami Heat. Now, I know oh, what? Yeah, I, I know. I know. Wow, okay. I know. I know. I know. There's yes, a lot sir. of people, I know there's a lot of people that's going to, you know, say, say something about this in the comment section, man. Y'all are really starting to make Tyler Hero overrated, bro. I, like <laughs> this, this is crazy. But I mean. Houston would receive Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, and one or two first round picks. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I'd have to go back and look at uh, what they offered them. But like I said, um, the reason I feel as if they should do, do this is because Tyler, for one, he's never going to be the player that James Harden is, you know? Obviously. For two, I, I personally feel as if Tyler Hero has already reached the ceiling. You know, it's it. I kind of feel like he's hit a plateau, man. Like I, I really do, bro. Like how much better can Tyler Hero really get for the Miami Heat? You just feel like he's just a shooter, because that's how I feel. No, no, no. It's not even that because that that he's he's proven that in his rookie year that he's not just a one di one dimensional player. Because that was that was one thing that a lot of teams in the NBA were concerned about, and which is why you know he he was drafted 13th instead of higher in the lottery. But. Yeah. I mean, Harden, he's going to be better for you on the defensive end of the ball. You know, he also brings a little bit more to your team offensively. Uh, and like I said, throughout the postseason, we saw that both Robinson and Hero were targeted on the defensive end. You know, with the acquisition of Harden, you won't have to really worry about defensive matchups because he's more than capable of holding his own on the def defensive end of the ball. You know, also Miami will still have key players such as Jimmy Butler. Bam Adebayo, they acquired Avery Bradley this offseason, and they kept important role players such as Dragic and Iguodala, you know? And on top of that, 
I trust Pat Riley, bro. At the end of the day, I trust Pat Riley. I know he's gonna be someone that's gonna be able to bring uh bring in star st- not star players, but players that he can build around uh that are gonna complement James Harden's game, and that won't take away too much from uh Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo's talents, bro. Yeah, and I also think Harden can actually mess. With, it might sound crazy, but I think Harden can actually mess well in that in that organization and that in that camaraderie that that locker room has built built for these last season and the f- years before. Like this really tight knit group who's always going to go on the court and work hard every single night. So I think he can bring a right. big big asset to that. Right, team. like I said, I mean Pat Riley, he he was somebody he was able to get LeBron James. He, he was able to get LeBron to buy in, you know? Yeah, exactly. LeBron went, so I think they can LeBron get James Harden to, to buy in. Right. LeBron went to him and he, he obviously he was having troubles with Eric Spolstra. He requested to get uh, a different coach. Pat Riley told him, no, this is the guy that we brought in. You're going to sit here and play with him. If you don't like it, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to deal with it. But yeah, I mean, I, like I said, the people people think that James Harden, he's, he's not a bad guy. He's not a bad teammate. Well, he actually might be a bad teammate. I, I can't really speak too much on that. Some of the things that he's done with, I mean, it's it's just it's it's a bad look. You know, he's yeah. he's played about all the superstars that left him. I mean, yeah. I'm not even gonna include Dwight Howard, but I mean, Russell Westbrook. That's your that's one of your childhood friends. And Chris yeah, Paul, he, he's a he's a Hall of Famer, bro, a future Hall of Famer. So I mean, AD. I mean, yeah, even Kevin Durant, but they didn't really have any issues. Harden, he he basically left because you know he wanted 50 million from Sam Presti in Oklahoma City. They didn't give it to him. For some odd reason, I'm not sure why, but yeah, that that's why he left OKC. But yeah, for our final team, I'd say possibly the Boston Celtics. You know, and I know a lot of people are gonna overreact to this, but let me explain why they should consider. First of all, who do you even give up? I mean, I think it'd be it'd be a combination like Jalen Brown, I believe Marcus Smart, maybe a pick or two, something like that. I'm not sure uh, off the top of my head how much Marcus Smart gets paid but it, it have to be some some type of combination like that like i said i have to go back and do some research on that but with that being said boston has struggled on the offensive end of the ball this year and i know they've only played a few games but they're currently ranked 15th in offensive efficiency and their poor play on the defensive end on the offensive end has translated to the defensive side of the ball and on top of that i sometimes worry that tatum doesn't have what it takes to really bring a championship to boston I know he's still in the developing stages of his career and he's got the potential to be a top five player in the league, but I'm not certain if he can be the guy that brings the chip home for us in the postseason, you know? Now, if, if they acquire Harden, he can be the closer for Boston on nights that, you know, Jason Tatum is struggling. Also, with Harden and Tatum both on the floor, that allows better looks for their teammates because those two are going to draw so much attention for opposing defenses, man. But, uh, I mean, my only concerns with bringing in Harden to Boston is... Will he be more of a team player like earlier in his career and not turn his teammates into ball watchers whenever he goes ISO, you know? But these questions won't be really answered unless Boston goes through with the trade, you know? But uh, now if I'm Houston, as far as what they should do in the future or, you know what I'm saying, preparing for the future, I think given the fact that you just acquired John Wall this offseason, they should see getting a trade offer that helps you win games now and for the foreseeable future, you know? That will also mesh well with John Wall's style of play. I'm not necessarily saying build the team around him, but you guys obviously traded for him so you can now, so you can win now. Therefore, make the moves that will put you in position to win now. But I mean, what, what's your thoughts on that? What do you think yeah. you should do? Yeah, I think they, they, I agree with you. I think they should bring access, like I said earlier in the episode, that bring either close to Harden or a step below where it, it can help out John Wall and nice that he's struggling. And I think they I, they still have Eric Gordon and they, some of their shooters. So I think I think just surround keep surrounding talent around that team that makes them elevate and be a contender in the West going forward. Right, right. And that, the acquisition of Christian Wood is also going to be very yeah. That's good. That, yeah because his yeah his first game he dropped thirty three and twelve. So he he's looking good. Yeah, he's, he's very very versatile. But I mean, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode. That's all that we have for you guys today. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review. Um, shout out to that boy Veer. You know, he's a, he's a subscriber that, you know, has been loyal to us since day one. Uh, we're going to start doing quick little shout outs to, you know, what I'm saying subscribers and everything. So put your name in a put your name in a comment section below and we'll shout you out in the next video but outside of that it's your boy nice chunga benny i'm here with my co-host greg king and we out we out